There are one, two, three, four, five, six weeks left in 2022. Six weeks! And I still have so many books I want to get to before the end of the year. So I don't do this very often, but I have decided to make myself a little bit of a TBR for the last six weeks of the year. As of now, these are the books that I have in my mind that I kind of need to read for some of them, but also the books that I've just been meaning to get to for quite a while, all the new releases that I'm very excited for. These are just the books that I want to read before 2022 is over. And I've actually split these books into a few different categories. Let's start with the books that I want to read just because I want to read them. I have no obligation to, although most of these, if not all of them, are parts of series that I've already started. So the first and only book that I don't have here to show you is an upcoming release and that is The Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan and it is the second book in the Celestial Kingdom duology. I read Daughter of the Moon Goddess earlier in the year and I adored it. It's probably one of my favourite books of the year and I just can't wait to find out what happens. I'm kind of a little bit sceptical that it's going to be quite as good as the first book but I did love that first book and there's just there's no way that I'm not continuing with the story especially considering that it's only going to be a duology. Just as with Daughter of the Moon Goddess the cover is gorgeous gorgeous and I've already pre-ordered it. So when it finally comes in, I think it's due to be released on the 30th of November in Australia. All things considered, all things going well, I will be prioritising that one. Speaking of new release sequels I've been super excited about, this is A Restless Truth by Freya Mask. This came in just this week at the shop, finally. I did also pre-order this one. It took a little, almost a week over the expected date to come in, but it's here. This is the second book in the Last Binding trilogy, apparently, by Freya Mask. A Marvelous Light was the first book and that was released last year I think. I have to say I didn't love it, it wasn't like a five star read for me at all, but it was just a good cozy fun time and I definitely want to continue with the series and see where it goes. This is an historical romance fantasy series and to me I think it's very heavy on the romance element. I think I mentioned when talking about The Marvelous Light earlier in the year that I think it's primarily like a genre romance story, like in terms of the actual plot and like the structure of the book and the focus of the book, there's, it's definitely got the historical setting and it definitely has the fantastical elements, but to me at the core, it's a romance book. Not that I'm an expert on romance, but that's my take. In that first book, we follow two men as they fall in love. In this book, we are following two women as they fall in love. I think one of these characters is the sister of one of the men that we met in the first book. So it's cute, cozy, historical fantasy romance, and it's queer. I'm here for it. Apparently in this book we can expect a shocking murder, a shipbound mystery and a scandalous magician. And if my experience with The Marvelous Light is anything to go off, I think this will be quite a quick read too, which is good because we've got lots more books to talk about in this video. Next up we have Network Effect by Martha Wells. This is the fourth or the fifth book in the Murderbot Diaries series. All of the other books that I've read in that series have been novellas. I've also read a short story. This however is a little bit more chunky, so deviating slightly from what we're used to with Murderbot. I don't know that I've actually read a Murderbot book this year. I think it was in 2020 that I fell in love and was first introduced to Murderbot. I was obsessed almost immediately but I don't, I don't know maybe it's the fact that this is like a full-size novel rather than a novella that's just kind of like I don't know kept me hanging on for a little bit procrastinating maybe. I think the other thing that was keeping me from reading this is because like the titles of these are not memorable to me whatsoever and I could never remember like which one I was actually up to and how many I had read but I checked my Goodreads and I'm pretty sure this is the next read for me. This series although it looks pretty dark and like there are elements that can be pretty intense overall it just it is fun. Like when I think of Murderbot I just think of a good time and primarily that is because the character of Murderbot is one of my favourites. To read. Basically in the first book of this series we're introduced to a security unit who's kind of like an android of some kind but this android Murderbot has hacked its governor module so it's essentially sentient and we spend most of our time in the head of Murderbot and it's kind of like toying with personhood and what that means to it and even though Murderbot doesn't really have to continue being a security unit in the ways that it used to have to like literally being programmed it sort of finds itself wanting to help the people around it, even if it doesn't always like those people. Anyway, this is just a really good time. There's lots of action, but Murderbot is just such a quirky, interesting perspective to read from. They're like at once really alien, but also so relatable and I just love them. So I need to get back into Murderbot, I need to get back into this world, and I need to finally read this book that I've been putting off for I think over a year now. Another book that I'm really hoping to get to before the end of this year is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. This is the third and final book in the Broken Earth trilogy, which is a trilogy I started earlier in the year and 
I love, I absolutely love. The first book in the trilogy in particular, the fifth season, it's one of my, I, don't, I think one of my favorite fantasy books I've ever read. It was just incredible, mind blowing. The second book was really very, very good, but not quite as incredible as the fifth season. But I don't know, I totally trust N.K. Jemisin with finishing this trilogy off well. And I am really looking forward to this. Uh, and I can't wait to see how it all wraps up. But these books are not a cozy fun time. They're pretty intense, they're pretty heavy, they are very readable, uh, but you know, they're kind of dark. They're very dark. And so I'm aware that I just need to be in the right frame of mind, both to sort of like spend good quality time reading this properly, not just sort of like skimming over, but like reading. And I would just love to like have this trilogy finished, at least my first read through this year. Like this is the year that I really like stepped into my fantasy era, I feel like. And I would just love to finish this off with a bang. I've read and finished a couple of duologies, I think, or I definitely will have by the time I'm finished with those earlier books we spoke about that I've really enjoyed. I think the only trilogy that I've read and completed this year though was Mistborn Era One by Brandon Sanderson. And uh, if you've watched my vlogs, you know how that went. So I would love to like finish a trilogy that I can say I loved this year. And I just, I know, I know the Broken Earth trilogy is gonna be that for me. If I actually get to finishing it this year and I definitely want to, high priority this one. The next one is another third book in a series, although it is not the final book. I think there's six books in this series. And this is Voyage of the Basilisk, a memoir by Lady Trent by Marie Brennan. So I have read the first two books in the Lady Trent memoir series by Marie Brennan and I have loved them both. Basically these are written as memoirs from a character named Lady Trent who is writing these memoirs later in her life and reflecting on her journey of becoming the foremost expert on dragons. It is not set in our world, but it very much feels like Victorian England. Lady Trent is a gentlewoman who doesn't want to really live by the rules that have been prescribed to her. She's obsessed with dragons and so she finds different ways to sort of fund and get around different social obligations to go and study and learn about these magical beasts. In the meantime, she also gets embroiled in scandals and political intrigue, and it's just wonderful. There's a really cozy kind of atmosphere to it. And I think like the character of Lady Trent is just, I, I just love her. She's really, it's a really playful, sassy kind of voice, a very confident voice. It is the voice of a woman who has lived her life her way and makes no apologies for that whatsoever. And I'm absolutely loving it. I love her voice. I love the character. And the stories are really fun too. So this is definitely a series I wanna like continue with. I don't wanna like lose momentum with. So I definitely have this one on my list, not so much as one that I would like wanna finish before the year is out, but just that I wanna read another installment relatively soon. And that just happens to be before the year is over. This next series that I've gotten myself into is actually a manga series. And that is Natsume's Book of Friends. I have read the first two volumes and I'm obsessed. I love this manga series so much. In this story, we meet Natsume, who is a teenage boy who can see yokai. They're spirits and demons. And these yokai just kind of pop up everywhere. Some of them leave him alone, some of them kind of terrorize him, and some of them actually come after him. And that is primarily because his grandmother could also see spirits. And when she was alive, she basically managed to trick a bunch of them into giving them their names. And you know, if you know anything about some kinds of mythology and folk tales, if you know the true name of someone, you might hold complete power over them. And that is the case in this story. So basically Natsume has inherited this book of names, this book of friends from his grandmother, and he has the name and therefore power over all of these yokai. And so he decides that he does not want to have power over these yokai. Instead, he wants to try his best to return their names. I don't know, it's just adorable. It's so sweet. I love the premise, but then I also just love this kind of very slice of life, but magical, strange, fantastical element of getting to know these yokai. And whenever Natsume kind of like gets introduced to a new yokai, we, we learn a little bit about them and their life story too. And some of them are funny and some of them are just so sweet and heartwarming. I have already cried. I've only read two volumes and I've already cried. In fact, I loved it so much that Blair and I are watching the anime together. And I do want to keep in front of where we're at with the anime, so I need to get to reading. Okay, so those are all the series that I'm currently in the middle of that I am prioritizing for the end of the year, whether to finish or just continue and maintain maintain my momentum. These next two books though are books that we will be reading with my Blossom Book Club which is a book club I host over on my Patreon. Every month I put up a poll with several books and then everybody in the book club can vote on which one they want to read together the following month. So we have already assigned our current month for November 
and also our next month for December books. This month we will be reading Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. This is like almost like a classic in YA at this point and it is a queer story. America in 1945 is not a safe place for two girls to fall in love, especially not in Chinatown. Red Square paranoia threatens everyone, including Chinese Americans like Lily. With deportation looming over her father, despite his hard-won citizenship, Lily and Kath risk everything to let their love see the light of day. The only downside to this is that the font is tiny. Like who, who can read that comfortably for like 400 pages? Not me. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna have to, and hopefully the story is well worth the effort. And our book club for December is The Dawnhounds, which is a fairly new release, and this is a New Zealand sci-fi title. It's also a debut, so I don't really know a whole lot about this book or this author. What totally sold me on it, though, was that this is apparently billed as a queer Maori-inspired fantasy debut following a thief-turned-cop who is murdered, brought back to life with a mysterious new power, and then tasked with protecting her city from a devastating attack. Also, I think there's pirates. I don't know, I was sold and I was really excited that my patrons decided to go with this one for December. I'm really looking forward to it. Rebecca Roanhorse says, fiercely queer. I loved it. The next couple of books that I'm prioritizing are YA reads. The first is Unnecessary Drama. This is a new YA romance contemporary story that I've just heard incredible things about. And this is a proof from work. This is not the official final cover, but I don't know, still cute. Anyway, I don't think that this is a book that I would necessarily pick up on my own. This isn't the sort of thing that I tend to love in YA, but I've just heard such good things and I do feel like I need to have a couple of good solid contemporary romances to recommend to teens up my sleeve, you know what I mean? And I'm hoping that this can be one of those. And then two books that I have been saying all year that I want to get to, Ray Bearer and Redemptor by Jordan Afuego. Now Ray Bearer is a book that I read back in 2020, I think, and I absolutely loved it, but it's been so long that I feel like I need to reread it. I mean, to be honest, I wanted to reread it immediately after I read it back then. So definitely need to get to that. Uh, and now the final, like the duology, the, the sequel, the final book, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> is, is out and available. And so I need to get to that too. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get to both this year, but I feel like, like this has been top of my list of what I want to read for so long. It's just other things keep, I don't know, either distracting me or I need to prioritize them for work or whatever. I just like, I want to read this partly so I can sell it, but also I want to read it for me. I loved it so much that even if I don't get to both, I do really, really, really want to try and get to Ray Bearer this year. This next lot of books that I have to share with you are actually graphic novels. Now, I have found lately that after a long day at work, I just don't always have like the energy and the concentration levels really necessary to sit down and read chapter after chapter of tiny little text of some high fantasy novel. And so in those cases, I found reading graphic novels actually really helpful. And like that is sort of like an accessible level of reading to me. So these are a few that I've had either on my shelf or this one, this next one I got out from the library recently that I would like to hopefully get to uh, before the year is out. This first one is The Girl from Beneath the Sea. Uh, this, I mean, I, everyone's seen this cover uh, and it's one that kind of comes in and out of the shop from time to time, but it's always one that I have a good look at. It's just, it looks beautiful. And my friend who works at the library that I go to actually recommend it. When she saw me pick it up, she's like, that's a good one. You should definitely read it. And this is a queer coming of age story set over the course of one summer. So it's got good summery beach vibes, but also it's queer and it's a love story. And apparently it's adorable. The art is very bright and vibrant and fun. So I'm looking forward to this one. Next, we've got The Long Way Down, which is a graphic novelization of the book of the same title by by Jason Reynolds. I haven't read the book, uh, but I did also recently read Jason Reynolds' new sort of graphic novel book uh, that I'm forgetting the name of, but honestly blew my mind, I think is like the quintessential 2020 book. It just was incredible. And so I've had this on my shelf for a little while, but I have renewed interest in it for that reason. And this like has watercolored images that just look absolutely stunning. So I don't really know a whole lot about this story. But yeah, given my recent experience with Jason Reynolds, I just am really interested to read this. It's been on my shelf for a little while. And it's just one I want to get to. The next one is The Greatest Thing by Sarah Winifred Searle. This just looks so pretty. Uh, this is another kind of coming of age story. I think our main character is sort of struggling after her two best friends go off to private school and she's sort of left navigating high school um, on her own terms. And then she meets two people who are a little bit different and sort of like help her learn more about herself and accept herself for who she is. 
maybe. I think that's the vibe. Also, a big selling point for me was that Jessica Walton, the author of The Stars in Their Eyes, which I loved, um, says, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This book will stay with you forever. This is a pretty chunky graphic novel as far as graphic novels go, so this might take me two sleepy nights after work to read, but that's okay. I've been looking forward to this one for quite a while and it looks really pretty. This next one is honestly one that I have been wanting to read for ages now. We stock it at work and every time like I'm putting it back on the shelf or something, I just, I have to stop and look at it. It looks gorgeous. This is, this was our pact by Ryan Andrews. I honestly don't know a huge amount about it. It seems like it's about some kids who have made a pact with each other um, on the uh, annual autumn equinox festival to sort of like ride together until they find the answer to some mystery. Um, and in the end, only two kids are left sort of like committed to this pact and they end up down some magical winding road and there's a talking bear. I don't know, call me simple, but that, that has totally got me. Next up, we've got the middle grade books that I have been wanting to read. A couple of these, like I need to read, I'm sort of obligated to read for a project that I'm doing at work, but the rest are just books that have like caught my fancy in some way and that I would like to be able to hand sell better. The first one I'm actually currently reading, I'm about a hundred pages in, and that is The Winterish Girl by Melanie Lebroy. In this, we're introduced to a young girl named Penn who is 11 years old and she is like winterish. That is her race of people. The winterish people are actually now sort of segregated and kept out, I think through magical means, of the Aurelian kingdom. And Penn herself was actually born on the same day that the Aurelian princess was born on. And because they were born on the same day, Penn was taken from her family and kind of like forcibly assimilated into this Aurelian family as like the princess's chosen handmaid kind of person. And so far everything has been leading up to the talisman ceremony, which kind of feels like, I don't know, like the sorting hat ceremony from Harry Potter or like the ceremony from Amari where they all find out what their powers are. It's essentially a similar thing. Everyone in this world, you know, when this ceremony happens, if you're Aurelian at least, you get assigned a talisman, which gives you a magical power and sort of like defines your role in life and in society. And no one is sure whether Penn is going to get one or not. Anyway, that's where I'm sort of up to right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. So yeah, definitely have to finish this one soon. The next one that I need to read for work is No Words. And I think this one is an own voices story about a refugee. This is a story of a 12 year old refugee who's trying to establish a new life in Australia grapple with his past and most importantly, find his voice. Cause boy, does he have a story to tell. It's a pretty short one and I think it's gonna be quite moving. I'm looking forward to it. Then we've got Dusty and the Outwilds by Rhiannon Williams. Isn't this such a pretty cover? This one was recommended to me by a friend at work. It's a new release. So I've just been, I've just been keen to get to it. Step into an unforgettable new land. The Outwilds are beguiling, dangerous and full of creatures Dusty half remembers from old bedtime stories. Beautiful, but deadly. And I think it's about a girl, Dusty, who has to go and find her aunt in this strange world. I don't know, could be cute. And then a book that came into work recently that I honestly just fell in love with the cover. I feel like this is going to be a me kind of middle grade. That is Mountainfell by Catherine Orton. Erskine is used to danger. She lives in the shadow of Mountainfell, a place of wild creatures and dangerous magic. When the most powerful and deadly creature of all, the fearsome cloud dragon snatches Erskine's sister away. Erskine must face her greatest fear and journey onto the mountain to bring her back. A terrible power is stirring and it is up to Erskine to save both her family and her home. And Lucy Strange says it's a glorious, heartwarming and magical adventure. Of course, there are other books that I also would love to get to, uh, but that is like 18 books or so, which is probably a pretty optimistic view of how many books I'm gonna get through between now and the end of December. But if I can get to most of those before the year is out, I will be pretty happy with myself. Let me know which books you are prioritizing reading before the end of 2020 in the comments below. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. And of course, a big special thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon, especially to Livia, Lynette Brown, and Marie. I hope you enjoyed hanging out and chatting books. I will talk to you in the comments and in the next video. Until then, happy reading. Bye.